Well, hello friends and welcome to our study today. Uh, that's from the studio as we announce in these things for with me, with Pastor Gennady. And uh, I am going to present to you uh, wonderful things today that the Lord, as usually, shows me on a daily basis, I would say. Almost on a daily basis. And... Um, well, as we move it on with the Lord and we trust in God for all these wonderful things that God has in store for us, we are going to dig in into the Word of God today. And I love to study the Word of God. I love to present the Word of God to you because it's the bread of life. The Word of God is the bread of life. So let's open today to the book of Numbers, and we are going to talk about chapter 6, and we will go to verse 22. The book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Well, it is interesting to notice here that as we read, it says in verse 27, us, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. It is important to know, first of all, and that this is what I want to stress out to you, it is important to know that without the name of God, attached to us, placed upon us, or placed upon the nation, God cannot bless. His name is powerful. When he came to Moses, he said this, My name, I am that I am, ever existing God. And I'm not going to repeat uh, this message to you, but I want to talk about placing the name of God upon us or upon the nation and when can this happen and how can this happen and as we read in this prophetic words of God spoken through Moses to the priests the high priest Aaron of Israel at the time and his sons this message is absolutely prophetic are you interested in this are you interested to know about what God really spoke and we're going to go verse by verse in this, as we say, ironic benedictions. But I'm not even saying ironic benedictions. This is the benedict benedictions of the high priest. So, let's move on and look into this studies. Praise be to God. Remember what I said in verse 27 as it says, And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Let's read this again from the very beginning at verse 22 and find out what God is trying to speak to us about. But before we're going to read these verses, previous verses in the whole chapter of sixth chapter of the book of um, Numbers, do you know that it, it is an instruction for a Nazarite? From verse 1, to verse 21. The whole chapter basically designated um, to a person who is a Nazarite and what he's supposed to be, how he's supposed to live, how he's supposed to behave, and so on. All the instructions about Nazarite, the one who is really and totally committed to the Lord, his life committed to the Lord. And I believe that the Nazarite can only be 
Jesus. Why? It's because the way it is explained, the way Nazarite is supposed to live and be, it has to be Jesus. Nobody else can do this. We just to follow his example. But it has to be him. So, you know, I would say what God has given in the law, in Old Testament, in all these books, is a portrait. The law is divided, actually, in a couple of different things. First of all, when God has given the law to Moses, he has given the law to Moses, including the approach to God. And what that means, the approach to God in those days was only through the blood of the animals, through the washing of hands, through the ceremonial, so that they have to wash their hands, wash their feet, put their clothes and everything else. It is all symbolic. It could not be fulfilled through men. So Jesus has fulfilled that special uh, commandment, how to approach to God. By dying on a cross, by paying the price for us, he became our high priest. And now the law of the approaching to God is obsolete. And by the way, 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. And when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, they could not bring any more sacrifice because the, there's no sacrifice without the temple. You cannot bring a sacrifice without the temple. And the, if without the temple, there is no priesthood. And without the priesthood, who can perform the ceremonial uh, sacrificial system there? Offering. Nobody. So when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, the approach to God has stopped the way it was before. And you know why? Because Jesus already was resurrected, our Messiah Yeshua, and he was in heaven at the right hand of the Father. So the only approach that we have now, according to the law and the New Testament, the only approach we have now is through Christ, through our Messiah Jesus. That is number one. Now, point number two in the law, it's God's commandments with us. Conditional, unconditional, it's all in the law, like the Ten Commandments, okay? These commandments are divided into portions. Portion number one, which is talking about our relationship to God. And you, you know, first commandment, there shall love the, the Lord, there shall, thou shall love the, the Lord the, with all thy heart, know all your soul, all your mind, <clears throat> and so on. And it speaks... The first four commandments speaks about our approach to God, that we shall not make images and bow and worship and so on. It's our relationship and service and worship to God. Now, in between that, between God switches to um, daily life of man in the Ten Commandments, he puts an underlying uh, a, a red marker underline, I would say, and that is, you shall keep the Sabbath holy. So when that is over, God places the Sabbath, the rest, the rest, and we can have that Sabbath in Christ, and of course, the day is still remaining as well. So the Sabbath is important. I believe it is important. So now, the sixth commandment and so on speaks about uh, the relation between man and man. Your neighbor, your family, your relatives, and so on. So God has divided this into and in between. He placed the Sabbath. Interesting. So, the Ten Commandments are different from the one that we talked about as to approach to God through salvation, through Christ. They are different, and they are... The next point. The next point in the law is our daily living. And God is speaking to us clearly through the law how we're supposed to live. Because, you see, in those days, people came from paganism. Even Jewish people, when they came from Egypt, they came from paganism. And imagine, God said and God has commanded to them as they were worshipping also, I believe, in Egypt, probably commanded to be, to be worshipped, uh, their idols that God has punished, you know. So God began to deal with paganism. 
paganism because the world and God are separated. So God begins to deal with paganism, and that is in the law. Remember what God says, what to eat, what not to eat, what is good for your body, what is not good for your body. God says six days work, but don't work the seventh day. You need rest. In Egypt, they were working 14 hours a day or more and no rest. So that is paganism. Paganism is to work and work and work and work and work and nonstop and to become a slave. God says, no, you work eight, day, eight hours a day. God has split 24 hours and three. Okay, eight hours for work, eight hours for your life, and eight hours for rest. Equally, equally, because God is a wise God. Now, the next point of that is God said about our moral life moral life and that is important even for today even for today so it's all in the law it's all in the law so the law is divided by different portions and subjects that we may understand certain subjects they were prophetic they were fulfilled as approaching to god and so on certain subjects god says when you come into me through christ you continue to practice them don't fall into immorality, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. The Ten Commandments are still in effect to live by. Otherwise, I mean, what do we see in Ten Commandments that we can is against our faith in Christ? Nothing. So, here we go. Now, let's move on into our message today. Because why did I speak about this today? And why did I teach you about this today? Is because... We must understand that in the millennium, as I taught a week ago, in the millennium, God is going to bring His law back. Not to be saved through, but to live by. Amen. Our daily life and so on. And we are going to live by. Now here, in this chapter, chapter 6 of the book of Numbers, what do we see? First of all, the whole chapter for 1, verse 1 to verse 21, we see the, uh, the law concerning the Nazarite, and I believe the Nazarite is Jesus. Only him could live this kind of a life. But then right after that, in verse 22, it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, on this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. So what is the point of Numbers 6, verse 22 through 27? I'm telling you, God showed me something really powerful. God showed me something very amazing about this particular passage. You know what that is? It's a prophetic event. It's a prophetic event prophetic event by the way when Moses approached God and the burning bush and asked what is your name he says God says I'm the God of your fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob I'm the God of your fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob all right that's wonderful and here's my name he did not say that his name is the Savior he didn't say that the name is Yah, uh, Yahweh, no, well, I mean, Yahweh, yes, I am that I am, but the God who heals and so on. He revealed his names after he set the children of Israel free. Why? Because when he set them free from Egypt, and when they left, they had better relationship with God. They began their journey with God. And that's where God began to reveal his names as Adonai Nisi, the Lord our banner, Adonai Rafa, Adonai Rochi, my shepherd, my healer, Adonai Tsikenia, the Lord is my righteousness, and so on. They could not comprehend that before they were set free because every name must be taught separately, differently, according to to the circumstances. Remember when they came to Mara and they had bitter waters and God said to Moses, cast this particular tree, the branch, 
into the water and the water was healed and he says the Lord that's where he pronounced himself over there as the Lord your healer Adonai Rafa Rafa Rahi it means Adonai the shepherd but Adonai Rafa well God has revealed himself to Israel as Adonai Rahi as well because he was shepherding them in the wilderness for 40 years so every name of God was actually revealed in the wilderness to the children of Israel so they may get to know God better and they may get to know God intimately so when God will reveal his name first as he said look at this as he said in verse 27 I hope you are with me and I hope you're enjoying the studies because I am <laughs> thank you Jesus so in verse 27 it says and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them so they shall put my name so God's name basically Yahweh I am that I am that means I am everything you need that's the beginning that's the beginning of introductory who God is but then the Lord revealed himself actually in the New Testament and he says my name shall be Yahweh Shua Yahweh Shua the Lord that has everything Yahweh I am that I am Shua means saves so the same God who spoke to Moses through the burning bush and speak and said that he is Yahweh I am that I am in the New Testament he says Yahweh Shua he add Shua that we call today Yeshua which means in Greek or in English Jesus Jesus in Greek and in English Jesus that's where we get the word Jesus Christ it means Hamashiach Messiah so that's what we have God's name was revealed in addition to what God spoke to Moses in the Old Testament he says Yahweh but he didn't say Shua he add Shua that salvation in the New Testament because God was not their salvation from sin as yet in the Old Testament it's only through the blood of Jesus these things could happen and now it happens so I I, I hope you understand what I mean it's, it's really powerful it's really powerful Yahweh Shua. so look when God says this when God says this that and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them that could not happen in the wilderness and you may be shocked by knowing this why is because God has added to himself the, to his Yahweh name he added Shua and without Yeshua Yahweh Shua God saves um, God cannot God cannot place himself and release himself in full measure and bless the nation the nation as yet but these things are going to happen and we know when it's going to happen when Jesus Yeshua Yahweh Shua our Lord and Savior is going to come back so while we're talking about the second coming of Christ let me start sharing with you about this priestly blessings and benediction you will in the moment you will realize what it is all about these blessings they are here in the law as many other things in the law and they are only prophetic prophetic because you cannot replace a high priest with a rabbi what God has spoken to do for the high priest including the sacrifices a rabbi cannot do a rabbi cannot bless the children of Israel today with this priestly benediction because it was given as we read in verse 23 it says speak unto Aaron and his sons saying on this wise we shall bless them why Aaron and his sons because they were the priests and Aaron was the high priest of Israel but not the one that we're talking about that will bring literally God's name upon the children of Israel and that God may bless them no 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 let me read carefully with you this verses again and you'll find out why look 
It says, on this wise, you shall bless them, the children of Israel, saying unto them. On this wise, it means this way. So God himself, listen to this. God himself, and God himself, he doesn't speak things for just today. God speaks many times the things for a thousand years or more ahead and prophetically. Because to God, one day is a thousand years, thousand years is one day, right? So when God spoke and said this, God himself laid out the pronunciation of the blessings that the high priest priest supposed to pronounce. It, was, it didn't come from the head of the high priest. It was given prophetically. Every line, what God wants to do and say through these blessings. Let's read. It's God's idea, and he's pronounced it word by word to Aaron and to Moses to write down. And look what it says. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And number three, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So there's three things that we see. Three things that we see. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. Number one. Number one. So th remember, these things are prophetic. And it says, the Lord bless you and keep you. God is keeping Israel now until he comes and restores Israel again. This is the time from the destruction of Jerusalem and so on, and from to the restoration uh, when, when the second uh, coming of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is going to be. So the Lord bless you and keep you. God promised something um, through the uh, 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 prophetic benediction here, priestly. Now, number two, in verse 25, the Lord, it says, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. So that's number two. It will be the grace of God, gracious it says, that will restore Israel at the second coming of Jesus. Look at this. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. So in these two particular verses, verse 24 and 25, we see that prophetic implication of what God is going to do with Israel and for Israel all this time. All this time. Amen. And uh, look, look, let's read, let's, let, let's read further. Number three, the Lord lift up, in verse 26, the Lord lift up his countenance. You know, when it says the Lord makes his face shine upon thee and be grace unto you, uh, um, it's different from countenance. It's different. Why so different? Because here the Lord make his face shine upon you. It's a prophetic event that God is going to see and to look after Israel and be gracious until Jesus will come back. And then in verse 26, it says, And the Lord lift up his countenance, countenance upon you. Lift up. So God is going to lift up his own countenance, which is his own presence, his own heart, everything that he is upon Israel and give them peace. But this is when Jesus will receive complete peace. When G this is when Israel, I mean, receive, will receive complete peace is when Jesus is going to come back. Now, I hope you see this prophetic implication in what God has said concerning these priestly blessings. Now, and after this, look at this, after all these things, after that the Lord will keep them and bless them, that the Lord, the Lord will uh, make his face shine upon them and keep, keep keeping them throughout and be gracious to them, to them throughout all the troubles. And then the Lord will finally lift up his countenance upon them and give them perfect peace. Only then, he says, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. What is going to be as my name at the end 
at the end when Jesus is going to return. His name is going to be Yeshua, Yahweh Shua, my name, and I will bless them. And do you know that in the, um, the restoration of Israel, God is going to restore every name upon Israel the way God has introduced himself in the wilderness. He's going to be their healer and shepherd and deliverer and righteousness and, and banner and all these names that God has placed and, uh, uh, and God will bless them. As it says, and they shall put my name, Yahweh Shua. See, without Yeshua, God's name will not function because Yeshua, God saves. God has to save first, and this is the entrance. And then, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Only then God will bless them. But let me talk to, to you about the priesthood right now the priestlyhood. It's very interesting, very powerful what God has shown me in this, and I would like to share that with you. Remember, I'm, I, I'm having coffee here because I have a little bit of uh, sore throat, dry throat, but I hope you don't mind that. Now, remember in verse 22, it says, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying this, speak unto Aaron and unto his sons. So speak unto the high priest of Israel. Now, according to the scriptures, we know that Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, has become our high priest. And he has become not the high priest of the Gentiles. No, he has become the high priest of everyone who comes to him be saved and of course Israel remember the story of Joseph Joseph was Joseph was hidden from Israelites for so many years from Jacob until he brought them to himself fed them with bread and revealed himself same thing happens right now and all these things are happening because you see, God is doing all these things, but through the pronunciation of the high priest. Are you catching me? Are you following me? So, watch. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to who? To Aaron, to the high priest of Israel. So, this is exactly what Yeshua, Jesus, is doing right now according to God's will and his own wordings, how to bless and I'm talking about Israel. Amen? I'm talking about the nation of Israel. Wow, it's very interesting. So Jesus today is the high priest. And he says, this is the way you're going to have to bless them. So it's through our Messiah Yeshua as our high priest. Listen to me, Jewish people. I'm Jewish myself. I'm born again. But listen to me. And those who listen into this program, if you are interested in what I'm saying concerning Israel, of course, at this point of time. Jesus as the high priest, Yeshua, as our high priest, whether we know it or not, like Joseph in, in, in Egypt. It's Joseph, and it's through Joseph that the Jewish people received blessings in the time of trouble, received bread in the time of drought, and then were brought into their care, the care of Joseph, who was the right hand of the Pharaoh, at the end. Same thing is happening right now. The same Yeshua that is hidden right now from the Jewish people because of their rejection, he's still doing his position and work as a high priest over Israel. And now he's pronouncing these things. It's through his pronunciation. Why? Because he is the high priest who paid the price for all. He has the right to speak these words with power and bless Israel and keep Israel because of his blood, because of his blood covenant, amen, because he paid the price. And look what happens. And that's what he has pronounced. And when God places blessings over a nation, 
that God has chosen as Israel, nobody will be able to destroy it because now it has been pronounced by the high priest in heaven. These pronunciations as God, as God has prophesied through Moses in the wilderness and given to Aaron. And he says, the Lord bless you and keep you. When Yeshua, Jesus, pronounced these things, and when he says these things every day, no nation, no evil can destroy. And to us as well, everybody who is a believer, Jesus is our high priest, and he's pronouncing God's blessings over us our life when God is pronouncing his blessings over our life what evil can touch us what evil can manifest nothing nothing and so on so Yeshua Jesus right now right now as he's in heaven he's still pronouncing this Two blessings as we read them in verse 24 and 25 but he is going to hold on to the third one that is in 26 and, and and this this one is so important as well why because these blessings the high priest as Joseph when he opened himself up to his brothers when they recognized who he was he cried he hugged them he kissed them and he blessed them when Jesus is going to return at his second coming, Yahweh Shua, when he's going to return, then he will pronounce over Israel this and say, the Lord now, now the Lord is lifting up not just his face, but his whole countenance, his glory, his power, his presence over you and give you peace and nobody, nobody will be able to take it. Hallelujah. And I shout because this is powerful. This is so powerful and this is so prophetic. And then it says in verse 27, <laughs> I am enjoying this so much. In verse 27, it says this, And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. Who are they? Who are they? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God in His fullness. The Father the son and they shall put my name Yahweh Shua Yahweh the same name that God spoke to Moses through the burning bush with added Shua which means saves upon the children of Israel and I will bless them when these things will happen and when God will bless them as it says these blessings will stay forevermore forever and ever and ever I, I I know I feel the glory here I feel the glory of God here is so glorious and it's so powerful I'm telling you this is so magnificent and uh, I think this message must be heard everywhere everywhere and I will repeat this and I will put this into archive and I might put this message on television because it's so profound, it's so powerful. I'd like to pray for you right now. Those who understand the mind and the wisdom and the glory of God will receive His blessings. Those who comprehend God's truth and power will receive God's blessings. Can I pray for you? Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, I give you the praise. I thank you for your goodness and mercy that are upon us today. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are coming to fulfill everything, everything in such a short time from now. I believe that we are on the verge of that coming of this second coming of the Messiah. And I give you praise. Somebody has problem with the heart condition right here God is healing you right now left ear being popped open I speak healing to that left ear in Jesus mighty name somebody has fever 
and it's infection in your body. God is healing you right now. Somebody's feet and toes have been healed in the name of Jesus. Begin to move them. Begin to move your legs in Jesus' name. I give you the praise, my Lord. I give you the praise for your healing people. I praise you, Lord God, for your mighty power and glory over the life. I thank you for your ministry today into the life in the name of Jesus. Yeshua, Yahweh Shua. In Jesus' wonderful name, I give you the praise. Friends, when we understand the word of God, when God reveals them to us, it becomes so easy and simple to realize who God is and to follow him and obey and to live for his glory. Amen. While we come into the end of this program, if you want to help us, please help us. We need your help. And uh, thank you so much for helping us with our film. The film is in the process right now of editing. And next year, I'm planning to do another one. God has put into my heart to do something. And I will be bringing... This is what, this is what it's go going to be. We are going to produce films. Not the way films have been produced before. But we are going to produce films in the way of God's word to be revealed. In the revelation of God's word. So whatever God, as, even as I spoke this message to you today, revealing this wonderful, marvelous glory in uh, uh, Numbers chapter 6, that's the way we're going to make films and movies. In the way of revelation. Revelation of God's word. So what people will be watching and understand and comprehend way easier who God is vividly, visibly, in, in the way of filming. And I'm sure people will get saved and be blessed. Well, thank you so much for helping us today. Call us if you need prayer or any other things. God bless you. Shalom to you. And I know that God is going to bless you and touch your life and minister to you some more. Stay with us. Support this ministry. And enjoy what God is bringing your way. God bless you and shalom.